So when's Van de Graaff Generator not Van de Graaff Generator? When it's Van de Graaff. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 643 of Progreen today. We're talking about uh, Van de Graaff, the quiet zone, slash... The Pleasure Dome. Look, see, he's got two covers. And that? That's just confuse you. you. Put it in the rack the wrong way around. There we go. Um, yeah, so as I open this with... Uh, it's a game It's a game of two halves. <laughs> is it really Van de Graaff Generator? Or is it Van de Graaff? What is it? Well, this was originally released on the 2nd of September 1977. Um, and it sees uh, Bu Bannon and David Jackson gone and replaced by Graham Smith, a violinist, who you see on the back there, from String Driven Thing, and Nick Potter, the bass player, who played with them back in the day on their, on their first, well, when you say first album, which is their first album? Is it, <laughs> is it at least we could do is wave to each other? Or is it Aerosol Grey Machine, which technically is a Peter Hamill album? Ah, oh, it gets complicated. Um, but yeah, so, but, right, their second album, if you're an anal retentive, or their first album, if you're a purist, I think that covers all bases in the comments section, doesn't it, doesn't it just, doesn't it, really, um, so yeah, this one is, yeah, it was an oddity, I listened to it, I listened to it today, and it's, again, it's not one I go to very often, um, you see the band strip back. I won't say it's their punk period, but you see a band that is uh, aiming for a lot shorter songs. Um, the instrumentation, like I say, is a lot more sparse, it's reduced. It's more immediate, more immediate. Uh, and the thing is, is it, it, it actually it, it bears more resemblance to a Pete Hamill solo album. Not all the way through. It doesn't feel particularly Van der Graaff generator, if you know what I mean. Um, it does feel more Hamillish, but that's because you're lacking Jackson and Bannon. Without those two ingredients in the mix, and this is, I mean, bringing you forward to today and like, was it Trisector and um, the other one? Was it? I can't remember. Was it Grounded in Numbers? And the last one that they had out again without. Um, without Jackson on board the dynamic shifts somewhat to it being you know sounding more like Hamill that's what you got here now I remember back in the day and, and again uh, I'll show, this is my copy which I bought many years ago probably about 93 94 ish possibly uh, for quids this is actually this is actually um, a Japanese edition yeah I didn't I wasn't really paying attention because if I pull out the uh, the lyric sleeve, it's got a sleeve. It's got. A sleeve. Well, I've dropped it. That's ruined it. Uh, I didn't drop it. I caught it with one hand. Let's see. You got you got your lyrics, but on the side, it's all it's all written in uh, in um, yeah, not in English, <laughs> which is a thing. So yeah. So I wonder how a Japanese copy of this found its way into my local. Second-hand little shop. Those are the interesting things. Those are the mysteries of the world. Um, I've owned it since then. But again, it's not one I, I listen to very often. Um, I remember enjoying it at the time. But again, I, again, I don't think I was as up to date with Hamill's solo career at that point. And with 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 the passing of time and the gaining of experience, uh, listen to it again. Um, I was, I was like, yeah, yeah, so it's all right, but it's not really a Van, de, it's not really a Van de Graaff generator album, is it really? Is it? That's how I felt about it. And um, there's some good bits on it, and there's some bits on it I don't really care for. Um, opens with lizard play again. <sighs> yeah, it's all right. I'm just going to say that about a lot, and that's going to annoy a lot of people who are watching this because they want insight. I can't give you insight. I can only give you opinion. 
<laughs> what insight can I give you? Don't come here for insight. No, you come here to laugh at the silly man and the utter futility of it all. It's all utterly futile, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I mean, the first side, I mean, they're not, they're not songs that, you know, that I remember or care about. They're pleasant enough. They're pleasant. You know, they lack the, the kick and the spark of a true Hamill solo album or, uh, of, you know, VDGG, you know, kicking kicking ass as it were. Uh, when we get to the B-side, I mean, that's the quiet zone. Again, they're, they're obviously, they're a bit more um, withdrawn. You know, they, those songs are a little bit more, you know, reserved. That's probably, that's probably a better word to use, reserved. Uh, and the Pleasure Dome, which is side two, uh, things are, are a, little, a little bit more, a little bit more in your face. A little bit more in your face. Um, opens with the wave. It goes right. But yeah, cat's eye, yellow fever, running, um, and the sphinx in the face, and you've got the um, Graham Smith violin again. The violin's on this a lot, you know. It's there and it's it's okay. You know, it's it does its bit, but it you know. You know, uh, and then we have uh, Chemical World and Sphinx Returns, which I always thought was really that's that's probably what I really enjoyed back in the day. Um, again, would I recommend this record? Well, it's one it's one of those outliers, isn't it? It's one of those ones that you go to when you've done the main the main catalogue. Um, but in in the running order, you know, it comes it comes fairly. Fair. That's not to say it's a bad album. It's just the ones that you can you compare it to are a lot stronger. You know the Porn Hearts and uh, and um, God Bluff and things like that. You know they're a lot stronger albums. And this one again, it just it it doesn't really it doesn't really do anything. Um, however, I mean the interesting thing is this, it's the same band um, augmented by. Uh, David Jackson and Charles Dickey that appear on Vital, which is a live album, and again they do some, they do some, they do some bits. Um, do they do anything from actual? Yeah, they do like one. Oh, Ship of Fools wasn't actually on the album, was it? But I really like Ship of Fools. Um, but yeah, it's a much more tighter. The, the band really work, really works in that format live. Again, I don't think it the the energy uh, translates that well onto the studio album, but the live album, Vital, I think is really really cool. Especially the medley, Lighthouse Keepers and Sleepwalkers, I really like that one. And of course, Nadir's Big Chance, uh, Urban Killer Urban, oh, and of course, Ship of Fools. It's a really good it's a really good live album because it's stuff that you, again it's a live album where you haven't heard this stuff before. They're not doing I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I've actually started reviewing Vital. No, no, Darren, no, no, we'll do that another time. Control yourself. Uh, <laughs> but what I was meant to say is the live version of this band is much more interesting than this album. So that's a good thing to come out of it. This album's a bit, uh, not that it's bad. It's just, uh, I'd rather listen to God Bluff or Porn Hearts or one of the others. Or even aerosol grey machine. It's not a bad record. That. I've reviewed. I've reviewed that one. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. It's a kind of a. It's an odd one. I find it a bit of an oddity. I liked it a lot more when I was a younger man. But hearing more Hamill and more Van de Graaff Generator and getting a little bit more the experience I've got, I'm like I'm thinking. Uh, yeah. And the good thing about it is Nick Potter's on it. You know, because they always lacked a, a proper. A proper bass player. That's the only. That's the only shortcoming of, of VDGG. Um, so yeah, in terms of a rating, oh, oh, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. Um, I'm going to give this three siren songs out of five. That's three siren songs out of five. But that's not. That's not a bad three. That's a strong three. That's a, a reflective three. That's a three comparing it to the rest of the, the VDGG catalogue three. You, you know what I'm saying? Because it's all a load of it's some rubbish. I could change my mind tomorrow. I might give it a five tomorrow, depending on which way the wind's blowing. Oh, is that some blue sky peeking through the clouds? Um, 
so yeah that's it uh, th thank you for watching um, I've been talking about Van de Graaff not Van de Graaff generator oh no oh no missus it's the quiet zone and the pleasure dome yeah I love the floaty silver apple look at that that's just that's top special effects that is um, I don't think don't, did the hypnosis do this one <laughs> I'm being cheeky um, but yeah so there you go you might not have come across that one it's something for you to to go to when you've done the rest of the catalogue uh, thank you for watching there's only one more thing left to say by now you should bloody well know what that is and that is prog on